Hello, and welcome to Total Training's Adobe Photoshop CS5 Extended Essential Series. I'm Amadou Diallo. I'm a photographer, author, educator, and digital imaging consultant. But most importantly, I'm your guide to the wonderful world of Photoshop. In this series, we're going to explore the essential tools, techniques, and workflow that lead to successful Photoshop results. Make no mistake, just because this is an essential series doesn't mean that we have to settle for bland, boring work. I'm going to show you how to use Photoshop like the pros do. We've got a lot to look forward to over the next few hours. At the end of this training, people will be asking you for Photoshop advice. Let's get started by understanding some of the basic principles of digital images and explore Photoshop's interface. Before we jump into the nitty gritty of Photoshop, it's important to understand a few of the basic principles behind what the program does and how it works. Photoshop is a raster based editing program that works with pixels. If you're completely new to Photoshop, your first question may be, well, what's a pixel? I can explain this much better with an image on screen, so I'm going to take this opportunity to open up a file. And you can do the same thing. Throughout this training series, you can open up the identical files that I've got here on your computer. Simply refer to your project files folder, and inside that folder is going to be a separate folder for each chapter. So here I'll go to File, Open, and I'm going to go to the Chapter 1 folder. Inside that folder, I've got a file called Fuji High Res. I'll click on that, go down, and hit the Open button. Now this may appear as a continuous tone image with smooth, seamless transitions between colors and tones and highlights and shadows. But if we zoom in, and we'll cover zooming in an upcoming lesson, but for right now, I'll just give you the shortcut of Command plus for the Mac, Control plus for the PC. And I'll just do that repeatedly. If we keep zooming in, and I mean really, really zoom in all the way up to 3200%, we can see that this image is actually made up of tiny individual squares. You can see them outlined here in this grid. And each of these tiny individual squares is, well, you guessed it, a pixel. If you don't see a grid overlay on your screen, it may be that your video card doesn't support this feature. In any event, however, you'll still be able to see the outlines of individual pixels at this high magnification level. So pixels are the building blocks, the fundamental building blocks of every image that we're going to be looking at in Photoshop. Pixels also have a fixed size. You cannot take a pixel and make it bigger. You cannot take a pixel and make it smaller. You can add pixels to an image and you can take pixels out of an image, but they remain a constant fixed size. Notice also that in the pixels here, you can see that each one has a slightly different color. You can see some have a little more of a cyan or blue, some have a little more magenta, some veer a little bit towards purple, and taken as a whole, these individual discrete colors combine to form our continuous tone image. So if I zoom back out, again on the Mac I'll do Command minus on the PC, Control minus. If I zoom back out to a more reasonable viewing level, we can see that grid of individual and distinct pixels forms a smooth continuous tone image. Now pixels are also very important because they determine the resolution of an image. And to find out more about that, we're going to take a look at the image menu. So I'm going to go up here to image, image size, and let's find out some information about this image. Here at the top under pixel dimensions, you can see we've got a width of 1600 pixels and a height of 1218 pixels. So left to right, 1600 pixels, top to bottom, 1218. That combination of pixels gives us a file size under pixel dimensions at the top of 5.58 megabytes. So that's how big a file is, and the file size is determined by the number of pixels in the image. I'm going to press return just to invoke the OK button. So in this image, you can see with that amount of pixels, and we're viewing it now at 100% or at actual size, the image spills out beyond the constraints of our document window. Even if I scroll around here, we can see that it's impossible to fit the entire image within the small area of our document window. By the way, I'm holding down the space bar on the keyboard while I click and drag to move this image around. That temporarily activates the hand tool. Let's contrast that with another image. I'm going to go back up to File, Open, back into our Chapter 1 folder. This time I'm going to select Fuji Low Res. I'll just hit the Open button with the Return key. Now, same image, shot of Mount Fuji, early morning, but Let's go up to the image menu and see what is different about this file. So we go to image, image size. Now a much different set of numbers. 
our width is 500 pixels and our height is only 381 pixels, giving us a file size under pixel dimensions of 558.1 kilobytes. Not megabytes, but kilobytes. I'm going to invoke the OK button by hitting the return key. So we have a much smaller image now. This image has less resolution. It has 500 pixels left to right versus 1600 pixels in the previous image. So this image right now is actually at 100% and you can see that our view is much smaller than we had in the prior image. Now you might ask, well, why can't we just zoom in like you did before? We'll do Command plus on the Mac, Control plus on the PC, and zoom into an identical size or reasonably similar size to what we had before. Let's try that. But if I scroll in, we're zoomed in at 400%, you can see the image quality has suffered dramatically. We can actually see the outlines of the pixels, and we can see very hard edges, stair-stepped edges. This is a quality that is very low. It means that the image does not have enough information, actually does not have enough pixels to be viewed on screen at this size compared to our initial file, which we'll go back to. There we see smooth, continuous tone image. So pixels are very, very important. They're the fundamental building blocks of our image, and they determine by their sheer number the size of the file, how much space it's going to take up on your hard drive, and how big we can view that image on screen.